Hello, everybody, and welcome to page 27 of the workbook. This is the beginning of section 1.5. We're going to be talking about interpreting, estimating, and using the derivative. Okay, so let's start reading example one here. So the fish population and the like is given by p equals f of t thousand fish after t years. Values for the function f are given in the table below and in the graph over here to the right. Okay, and they're going to ask us to do several calculations. Before we do that, let's maybe look at our graph and remind ourselves what the units are here. So we're measuring t in years, okay, and that's on the horizontal axis, and p is being measured in thousands of fish. I'll just write thousands for short. Okay, and so looking down at part a here now, the first calculation they'd like us to do is f of 4 minus f of 2 over 4 minus 2. You might recognize that as an average rate of change that we're being asked to calculate. Okay, so let's see, how would we do that? Well, f of 4 and f of 2 are numbers that we can get by looking at our table. Okay, in particular, f of 4 is 1.8 and f of 2 is 1.2. So we'll take those and subtract them. And in the bottom, we've just got 4 minus 2, which is 2. Let's try that again. So 1.8 minus 1.2, 4 minus 2 is 2. And if we do that calculation, we get 0 0.3. Okay, now what is the graphical meaning of that calculation that we just did? Well, this is actually just the slope of a secant line, this number. If we find the numbers 2 and 4 on the x-axis and just kind of draw in the corresponding points on our graph, we just found the slope of the secant line through those two points. Okay, so I'm going to draw an arrow and label that line S1 that we just found the slope of. Okay, and let's see, moving on to the next one, f of 6 minus f of 4 over 6 minus 4, same idea. Okay, so we're just calculating an average rate of change between two different points. So let's see, f of 6 is 3 and f of 4 is 1.8, so we'll subtract those two numbers. And this time we've got a 6 minus 4, which is a 2 in the denominator, so that's going to give us 0 0.6, and we can think of that 0 0.6 as also being the slope of a secant line, this time through the points 4 and 6. Okay, so if we draw that line and it would look like this, Okay, there's S2. Okay, and then finally, we come to f of 6 minus f of 2 over 6 minus 2. All right, so let's see. f of 6 and f of 2 are 3 and 2, looking up at our table here. So we're going to get 3 minus 1.2. Okay. 3 minus 1.2 over 4. And... Okay, if we do that calculation, we get 0 0.45. All right, and that line would be the secant line that goes between 2 and 6. Okay, so points here and here. I'm going to draw this line in green just to help us tell these apart. Okay, so it would look like that, and I'll call that line S3. Okay. And maybe it would help here just to remind ourselves, I'm going to also remind you which number goes with, with which line here. So why don't we write in here, 0.3 was the slope of S1, 0.6 was the slope of S2, okay, and then 0.45, that was the slope of S3, just so we can tell those three lines apart. All right, and now we come to the interesting question that ties all of this together, looking back up at part A here. So... Which number gives the best approximation of f prime of 4? Okay, well, to answer that question, we first need to know what does f prime of 4 represent geometrically? So f prime of 4 is the derivative of f, and we've talked about how the derivative is the slope of the tangent line to a function. So f prime of 4 would be like going to 4 on our curve here 
drawing in a tangent line, and then f prime of 4 is just the slope of that tangent line. Okay, so here's the question you want to ask yourself. Which of those three slopes that we calculated, or which of the three lines, um, S1, S2, or S3, do you think would give the best approximation to the slope of the tangent line? And if you look at that, I would say it's probably S3. You can see that S1 is not steep enough, S2 is too steep, and S3 is kind of the best overall approximation that balances the errors out and gives us the best overall approximation of f prime of 4. All right, so let's write that down. Zero point four five, which was the slope of S three, gives the best approximation. Of F prime of four. Okay, and I think we've answered everything that we wanted to in part A, so let's move on to part B. So now they'd like us to give a complete sentence interpretation of f prime of 4 in the context of this problem. How about if we start with units here? Okay, so f prime of 4 represents the slope of the tangent line. Um, in part A, we remarked that out of the three numbers, 0 0.45 is the best overall estimate. But what are the units of 0.45? Well, since it's a slope that we're talking about, the unit should be units of rise over run, so thousands of fish per year as we look up at our graph here. Let's write those down as our units. Okay, so how could we explain this then? Well, you can kind of see from the units that we're talking about a rate of change here. So something along the lines of f prime of 4 gives the rate of change of the fish population at time 4. in thousands of fish per year at t equals four years, something like that. Okay, and that rate of change is 0.45 thousand fish per year, or if you wanted to, you could move the decimal and say 450 fish per year. Okay, and then finally, moving on to the estimation and interpretation of the derivative, this is kind of a summary of what we did above. Okay, so for a function f of x, the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change. We already knew that actually from previous work. And the units of f prime of x are units of f per unit of x. That's just reminding us that we're really talking about a slope when we talk about the derivative. So we're going to get units of rise over units of run graphically. Okay, and then finally we come to a new thing called the central difference approximation. We can approximate the value of a function using this formula, f of a plus h minus f of a minus h over 2h. This looks kind of complicated, but it's really the very same technique that we used back in part a. Okay, when we, when we calculated this number right here, f of 6 minus f of 2 over 6 minus 2. The key there was the numbers 6 and 2 were on either side of 4, okay? So if we just clear away a little bit of clutter here. When we were approximating the derivative at 4, and we, we calculated f of 6 minus f of 2 over 6 minus 2, the key was that 6 was a little bit bigger than 4, 2 was a little bit less than 4. And by doing that, we sort of balanced the error out on both sides. That's exactly the same thing that's happening down here. A plus H is a little bit bigger than A. A minus H is a little bit smaller. And so overall, we're getting one approximation for the derivative that's pretty good.